everybody who's watching. We are heading into part two of the attempted resurrection of the EVR teleplayer. And Tom is going to explain our next step here, which is going to include some new parts yeah. we received. So, so far, we have just replaced this board here. This is the uh, flyback transformer board, high voltage board there. That was the board that was damaged in shipping. So I've, I've installed that and connected it to the existing doubler, the old voltage doubler. It's still installed. So we can check the voltage output from that and see if it, uh, see if it gives us anything. The voltage doubler is that white thing right yeah, there in this, the center of your screen. Yeah, this block here. Yep. So high voltage is coming in from the transformer there into the doubler, and then out here. As I get close to this, it should draw a nice little arc there. Um, and we're still reading um, just over a thousand volts, not the uh, 20,000 I believe I'm supposed to be getting. So uh, we'll uh, try a new doubler because we have one of those. So Houston, we still have a problem. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. And that was kind of uh, something that I suspected, although I thought we'd start with the flyback board since it was the one that suffered some physical damage. Right. Um, so, yeah, next step is that doubler, and then we could actually put the old flyback board back in, and you'll have a nice good spare if you want to. But <laughs> yes. Totally your call on that. You might as well use the good parts. And as a reminder to those who didn't see it, this is the one that I repaired because UPS destroyed it uh, on its way to me. So you can see the patchwork I've done there on that board. So, but we have a new one. Yeah. All right, so the voltage doubler, the old one, is now sitting here, and Tom has inserted the new doubler. And, and, and for the time being, we have the CRT disconnected. We wanted to verify that the high voltage was not excessive or abnormal coming out of this first. So same flyback transformer feeding the doubler here on the output here. Definitely still draws an arc. And when we come in contact with it, we're reading about almost almost 15,000 volts so that's probably within uh, within the actual operating tolerance of this um, we'll have to see how it performs with the CRT attached but at least uh, regulation hasn't hasn't gone excessive or anything we're not we're not over the maximum for the tube so shouldn't hurt anything to connect it up and see if we get a raster All right. so we have a new mm -hmm. flyback transformer as well as a new doubler Mm -hmm. uh, what would your guess be as to which one gave us the, the best voltage? Um, I think it's the doubler. Oh yeah, d doubler for sure. Yeah, it, it, our, our original problem uh, still existed with the old doubler. Um, we were getting about a thousand volts before we replaced the flyback and uh, about a thousand volts after we replaced the flyback. So no, uh, no difference there. Um, it's also worth mentioning this is a doubler and a high voltage rectifier in one. So oh, high wow. voltage AC is coming in. Uh, I think it's around 10,000 volts AC coming in, and then this outputs around 20,000 volts uh, DC, or in this case, it's around 50, 15,000 volts. Um, either way, I think the schematic uh, more meant uh, 20,000 maximum. Uh, it's within. It's definitely closer to where it should be, and it should <laughs> give us something, I would guess. So we'll see. All right. have any arcing within the tube. That's good. So what we should see here. Once again, we have your fluorescent lights yeah. providing some interesting patterns on the you know what, I do. TV there. I do maybe see something. It could just be very, very dim. Um... we turn all the lights out? Yeah. No. Again, no. <laughs> we could. I'm just going to throw this cover back on now. Okay. And, uh, oh, you know what? We, we may not see a raster until we're actually in uh, one of the forward modes. Or, modes. Yeah, okay. let's, let's go ahead and load some film. Oh, there. there we go. Yeah, we have to stop first. Yeah. 
Let's give it an easy task. Let's try the monochrome. Okay. okay. Ooh, we got our oh, a little bit of a sound. I can show you how we can fix that. I fixed it before. Okay. Yeah, maybe we should stop and do that. Okay. But until then, we have something nearly resembling a picture. Yeah, we do. Alright, let's, let's fix the dinging. <laughs> oh, look, there's a guy. There's a dude. There's a guy. Do you see all that, uh, those black specks? Yeah, I do, yeah. There? It's also, interestingly enough, my... My waveform monitor doesn't appear to even be trying. Oh, there we go. I'm in the wrong mode. There we go. So is that what we're supposed to see? Uh, sorta. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it has a it has sync. It's a little it's a little high in gain. Um kinda reduce the level of that just so we can see all of it. A lot of video there. And a lot of that's coming from me uncapping it with my hands there. The sync pulse coming out of it is, is clean, that's good. Now the black specks may just be because the scanner is dirty. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so uh, the the dude in that uh, commercial mm -hmm. from the from nineteen sixty seven was right about how quiet this thing is. It is just yeah. almost whisper quiet. Well, because at the time broadcast alternatives like a two inch quad were Quite loud, you didn't yes. want to be in the same room with them. No. I'm trying to cast a shadow on this, it's kind of tricky. There we go. Alright, I think we should go through and make some uh, quick adjustments. Yeah. Make sure the like photocells are getting the right voltages and. Uh, yeah. The photomultiplier tubes, rather. Let's see if still frame works, just out of curiosity. I don't have that knob on it. Oh yeah, there we go. I can roll it. Yeah, let's try to get it working more, and then we can really see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, inside the cover here, there's a there's a small photo cell, and that appears to be in sort of a feedback loop with the intensity of the CRT. If I cast a shadow on it, you'll see the ultraviolet raster light up. And uh, I think that's sort of an automatic uh, gain control for the tube, so so that it's it's kind of like a servo, so when the uh, as, as the tube gets brighter, it lights up this uh, photocell, which causes it to in turn get dimmer, and it kind of stabilizes and uh, finds, its, finds its happy medium and the right intensity of light there. Mm -hmm. So that's why we weren't seeing the raster earlier. Crazy. Yeah. But our biggest challenge was the high voltage. And yes. Getting enough. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> right. Before we wouldn't have even begun to see a, a raster with only barely a thousand volts at the tube. So this is a big improvement. Um, let's see if we can't make it better. <laughs> All right. Okay, Tom. All right. <laughs> what have we done? So clearly, we now have a have a picture. So um, basically, uh, I adjusted the uh, black level and the photomultiplier tube gain. So that's like the essentially the brightness and the contrast, if you will, of the uh, of the output. So um, that's uh, that allowed us to 
regain all that shadow detail and, and actually see a properly exposed picture. Um, if you look up on the uh, scope here right above, I have the black level sitting just at, if I hit stop there for a moment, you can see the black level's um, at, or in this case I guess a little bit below uh, 7.5 IRE, that's the standard uh, black level for video. And our picture level is peaking at around 110 or so. It's uh, I didn't want to make it too dark. Um, it's fairly rare that the film actually gets up that bright, so just keeping it there. So, and then I also adjusted the uh, sync tip uh, level, the horizontal and vertical sync level, to be negative uh, uh, 40 IRE, which is where it should be. So now the signal's about uh, one volt peak to peak or so, so it conforms more to uh, standard, um, NTSC standard. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, right now that horizontal wobble that you're seeing is in my monitor. This monitor is a little, a little picky. I should probably use something a bit older. Um, <laughs> that was designed to sync to less stable signals. Um, Although earlier it was behaving quite nicely. Yeah, it so. was. I don't really know what's going on now. Yeah. Um, so maybe that's what we'll do next. I, I may grab a small monitor uh, so we can look at the stability on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess next, uh, oh, and the other thing we did was clean the uh, face of the CRT. The, uh, the scanner tube was very dirty. Um, and that was putting a bunch of uh, sort of specs. black specks into mm -hmm. the uh, image, so that's improved greatly. Um, yeah, so our this is in the A output, so this is track A, monochrome. If I switch over to track B, I kind of just get a blurry blob. Interestingly though, the, uh, the uh, dust specs. on the mm. tube are still, it, the dust specks are still sharp, so there may be uh, something strange going on there. Yeah, and then we have the an, a track looks We have good. an eerie shadow, black shadow yeah. on that left side too. So. Yeah. So, so ordinarily I would assume that it was out of focus, but um, if that was the case, I'm not sure why the uh, black specks would be sharp. Um, oh, you know what? Uh, yeah, if the lens was out of focus, the CRT, I think, would still give you sharp specs. Yeah, it would, because because it's just picking up the available light from the CRT. So, uh, yeah, I bet I bet we just have a lens out of focus there. That's yes. what we'll check next. Um, but our A track looks good. It's amazing. Um, I'm gonna see if I can't do something about this monitor for further testing. <laughs> All right. So just a moment ago, we noticed that there was some uh, smell of smoke. Uh, burning, I guess, not smoke. Yeah, kind of more like burning, burning dust, and we just wanted to make sure that there wasn't any, uh, uh, wasn't anything out of the ordinary. Um, there are two large power resistors on the bottom here. One of them's at uh, around 150 uh, degrees. What is this cool gadget right that you have in your hand? So this is a, a thermal camera with an infrared thermometer built in. Uh, this is the uh, FLIR TG165, which I think was recently replaced with the uh, TG167 um, model, but a uh, very uh, useful little device for pinpointing um, uh, electronic problems and things that might be overheating or uh, just differences on circuit boards and things like that. So cool. I use it for a lot of stuff. That is um, neat. So uh, long story short, I don't think I don't think our faint burning smell is uh, any cause for concern. <laughs> okay. It's uh, probably just the smell of old electronics being hot. And old dust, yeah. All right. <laughs> First amplitude. First amplitude, where are you? R19. Where on R19? It's probably... Tom and I spent several hours tweaking that EVR. Uh, there was a lot of optical issues. There were optics that were out of focus. There were measurements that needed to be made about voltages. There were adjustments that needed to be made on that flyback transformer. 
there was just a whole lot of stuff. And the conclusion of our session together until we ran out of time was that we were able to get some color from the unit, which uh, I'll show you pictures of here. Um, very, very exciting stuff. I mean, this is a 50 year old VTR, videotape recorder using film that we were able to bring back to life. And so it was very exciting as we went over one hurdle and reached another hurdle and were able to finally get an image up on the screen, which was pretty amazing. So I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did the discovery. We are gonna do one more session together on this. And in the meantime, Tom is gonna to make some additional adjustments to it so that on our next video, we should be able to see it working almost as good as it did from the factory back in 1973. Thank you for watching guys. Please subscribe to my channel. Please go back and watch part one of this video if you haven't already seen it. And uh, please share this with a friend. That's the only way my channel is gonna grow is if you guys share. You can support me on Patreon. You can visit me on Facebook and start up a conversation with me there. Those links are down in the description. And until we talk again, we'll see you next time.